I forget what it is. Tracklib? Um, Tracklib, I think, right. Mm. Do you use anything? No, I, I don't use uh, Tracklib. And I actually, at one point, I thought about it. I very much have a bead like, ah, oh, should I get it? Should I spend the money every month? I, I thought about it. And I, it has its uses for sure. Um, but uh, I dig. <laughs> like, either I'm going to a record shop to go dig for a personal record or I'm on YouTube scouring the very deepest corners of it looking for something really good. Um, that's normally what I do. I don't, I don't like track lib and splice and shit like that very much. I know it has its uses, though. I could see its uses and its potential of it being very, very integral to certain people's productions, but for me personally... I like to find the record myself. Hmm, okay. It's a very... Um, it's an attachment you get to the record when you find something yourself and go and you flip whatever you find. I totally get that. Absolutely. You yeah. build that little bond even with something as simple as a song. It's like, right. you know, it's, right. there. it's something in there is, is just for you. Because there's like, never been a beat that I've made that I have never felt emotional with. Hmm. And... and that's that's like something that Alchemist has said. I feel like Alchemist, I think, has said this at one point where he was like, if I don't feel emotional, then I know it's not the one. And every time I make a beat, I get very emotional. Like, it's just, I'm a very emotional person. So, if it's like I said, if I, if I make a beat, if I don't feel emotional, I either don't send it to somebody, I keep it in the tuck, or I just make something else. I just, I got to feel something. Like, I, I really, I, I don't even care about the artist at that point. Like, people always ask me, like, do you ever think about the artist when you make a beat or something? At first, I did. Um, and all I thought about was West Side Gun, and I was just making beats just to try to impress West Side Gun. And that, that just, it was cool, but it wasn't, like, the best thing for me, uh, personally, because I would put myself in a box. I stopped caring about that stuff and I kind of just started just making stuff that I would feel comfortable listening to on my own and be like if this makes somebody feel a certain type of way then I know I did my job so now every single time I've had a rapper tell me like a certain beat that I send them in a pack makes them feel a certain type of way or like oh this beat for sure is like the one for me because it's like it speaks to me in ways that it doesn't speak to me at all or like whatever like those responses will tell me that, okay, I'm doing my job. Mm. Nice. There's no hiding, no shame behind feel, feeling something for the beat as many Absolutely as you make. Absolutely not. You should. You should. If you don't, you know, you mean, it, 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 it really depends because there's some people that just work and make beats very quickly and kind of just move on to the next one. I mean, it doesn't mean that they don't necessarily have feelings in their beats, but, you know... Me, I take time when I compose my shit. I don't make, like... Yes. I could make a beat in 30 minutes, but I could also make a beat in two hours, and it really just depends on what I want it to sound like and what I want from it. And that time is very integral to what I want it to sound like. Really. And, so, and more just, uh, you know, out of respect for the art of the producer and sample picking and stuff. Yeah. Like, do you... What's your process? Do you pick the sample, like chop it out of the song you chose, and then build around it, or do you build like the bass and then like, oh, the sample fits this just perfect? No, um, I'm uh, it it I for me it depends. I don't necessarily have a formula that I go with every time. Every sample is different. Mm -hmm. um, okay. okay. And and you have to treat it that way because if you kind of force a specific technique or a specific motive to whatever record you're approaching, you're, you're forcing too much. Mm -hmm. um, I, I like to live with the song. So if it has a certain groove or, it, or I think it could perceive a certain groove in a certain way, I'm going to just do that. So there are times where a sample is so good, I find a loop two variations, that's it. Because it's just, it's good. Fuck it. I don't even gotta touch nothing. There are times that I manually chop things myself because I want it to sound very different from what the record sounds like. The record could sound dope as hell as a loop, but I still want to chop it. Mm. And there's been 
Uh, a good example of that would be uh, Snow Beach mm -hmm. uh, from Luchador Going Diamond. Snow Beach, all chops, no mm -hmm. loops, all chops from different parts of the record. But if you would look at the record, you would see how many chops. They're all from the beginning. There's some here, there's some there, there's some there, there's some at the end. All mm -hmm. chops. Um, but it sounds very cohesive. It sounds like a loop almost. That's what I, I love that. I love doing that. Nice. You know, like that, that's the shit I strive for. Because people could never point out what type of sample it is. And I love that shit. And I'm like, huh? <laughs> I kind of do that on purpose. <laughs> Yo, it's over. All right, it's over. It's over. Move the mic. Move the mic. Thank you. All right.